Hey friend, I'm Tiffany Harlick and my platform offers astrology training for spiritual development students. Today we're going to talk about the October 2024 forecast. And so welcome if you're new here, uh, welcome back if you're old here. October, there's a lot of intensity right at the beginning, right? We've got this eclipse going on in 10 degrees of Libra. At the same time, the numerology shifts from an eight to a nine. And so October is a nine month and an eight year. Um, the nine brings a sense of intensity with it, right? It's, it brings a sense of urgency. It's kind of like the anoretic degree in astrology where it's like the last to the end. Um, so the nine months, we are trying to wrap things up. We're trying to have closure, completion, a culmination of events, and of course, integration. Um, and so I wanted to bring this up because 2025 is a nine year. And so all year long in 2025, we're going to be wrapping things up, tying up loose ends. It's a big year of change and transition. And so all year long, there's going to kind of be a blending of closing doors and opening doors. And so I want you to give yourself space for grace um, because there, there just is that sense of urgency with uh, wanting the change to happen, but not knowing what that change is, right? And so I feel like uh, there can be some opportunities, right? To lean into your faith, to step forward in, in faith, um, to listen to what you think your higher power is wanting you to do, where you're wanting, where your higher power is wanting you to serve in this precious human life, okay? So October, right? A nine month and an eight year. So the eight has this sense of risk and reward. It has a sense of rolling the dice, taking a chance, getting out of your comfort zone, trying something new. I see people moving, changing jobs, making big shifts in their lives during eight seasons. And I certainly have. <laughs> I certainly have this year. So uh, let's just keep the numerology in mind. Um, looking over at my planetary pathways notes here, the sun, Mercury, what else? Um, yeah, sun and Mercury are going to be traveling from Libra into Scorpio, of course. Venus is starting in Scorpio and will end in Sag. Mars is in Cancer and it will be in shadow. So Mars is in shadow preparing for the retrograde cycle in, in December. We've got that big solar eclipse on October 2nd. Um, Jupiter is going to stay in Gemini. Saturn and Neptune will stay in Pisces. Uh, Chiron um, is retrograde in Aries, Uranus is retrograde in Taurus, Pluto is retrograde in Capricorn. Uh, so that's kind of where the planets are as an overview. And I want to jump in to this first week of October. Uh, before I do that, I want to share my screen with you. So if you guys are listening, you may not get uh, to see the visual. So hop over to YouTube if you want to see it. I just wanted to introduce you to my website. This is the blog page and this is the October forecast. So when you click on it, right, there's three main resources for 2025. Um, here's what I just went over, the planetary pathways, but here's the blog post for all of October. So if you're worried about missing something or not getting the dates, I have all of the data written for you. And I extract this from two different products uh, that I write every year. We've got the digital astrology calendar. And so whether you're wanting the 2024 copy or the 2025 copy, uh, I just wanted to give you a little test drive of what it looks like. Um, and so, you know, this is, for example, October 17th, we'll have a full moon. So when you click on the description, it'll show you all of the info and insights and you'll be able to learn astrology, uh, right? Venus is moving into Sag. Have you ever met a free spirit? That's a great way to consider the energy of the second half of October for sure. So uh, as you go throughout the year, right, you'll you'll be able to see these different resources. You'll be able to see, oh, wow, the sun moves into Pisces here in February. So here's some stuff about health. Here's some stuff about flower essences. Um, here's some stuff about, right, like it, it'll take you to a resource that is relevant for what's going on with the current astrology. So um, the next second resource I have for you here is the 2025 workbook. And so here's what it looks like when you click the link. Um, it is a paperback workbook. Here is a sneak peek, right? So here it starts out with some numerology, what you can expect every month. January in 2025 is a one month and a nine year. So beginnings within endings. Um, if you scroll forward, I'm giving you a 2025 astrology overview in the journal, right? And it shows you uh, some different dates that I find important. 
And then as you get into the mix of it, well, we'll do the eclipse overview, we'll do the retrograde overview. Um, and this is like a, a just a sneak peek, right? I have all of the horoscopes there for you. So if you're wanting to see what I think your year is going to go like, that's in the journal. And um, if I could quickly scroll to the end. So this is not what this is going to look like here. Uh, because we, we're still in editing. But each of the months has um, an opportunity for you to go through and really learn astrology and apply it to your chart, as well as writing your intentions or goals. And it's alongside of, um, you know, some written descriptions. So you're not just out there alone with it. Uh, I'm guiding you through it. Okay, whoops, clicking around. And last but not least, I want to invite you to the 2025 predictions workshop. So if you click here, you'll be able to uh, sign up. You just book this spot. This is um, the third annual year that uh, Celeste Brooks and Sarah El Harar and I have gotten together to do our predictions for the year ahead. Um, we have written down the most important astrological influences as well as our ideas. And so it'll be a panel spot. You click book here. You, this is the time. It's November 11th at 2 central. You continue, you fill in your stuff, right? And uh, you click yes to the terms and conditions. It's a $33 investment and we hope to see you there. So, okay, back to uh, October. So let me pull up my notes here for October. I just closed them out accidentally. Um, so what I want you to know about this first week of October is that there's a huge intensity to it, not only because of the eclipse, um, but also Mercury is squaring Mars. And so Mars is in fall in Cancer, uh, and this is a kind of a detrimental place, like it doesn't like being there. Um, and so there's this, this tension, there can be some passive aggressive stuff, there can be some emotional stuff that's bubbling up for the purpose of healing. Um, and so just be careful, right? Loose lips sink ships. So be careful with your words, Mercury, and your actions, Mars. Um, do what you say you're going to do. Be a person of integrity. Uh, when you don't do what you say you're going to do, if that happens, right, try to quickly correct. Try to quickly course correct, right? Try to make things right. Try to be in right relation. Uh, Sun and Mercury in Libra. Try to be in right relation with yourself, really. Um Yes, Venus trines Saturn on October 4th, uh, even though that's when Mars is is in shadow, right? It's still this, there's a feeling of commitments in love, commitments in money, commitments with long-term planning. Um, some of us are really making huge headway with our long-term vision and goal for our, our lives <clears throat> and shifting into that flow and that rhythm of what the higher power uh, in your life wants for you. So some, some creative forces trying to happen through you and so how at what level are you allowing that to happen uh where where do you want to what kind of old person are you in the process of becoming what is your legacy right what are your future plans like for stability security and order that's what i love about astrology is that it brings order to chaos it brings seasons and rhythms and a practical way of handling the different seasons of life okay so if we look at the next week of october which is the 7th through the 13th Venus trines Mars, Mercury trines Jupiter. There will be some news. <laughs> um, there will be a feeling of good news, I believe. I think that there's going to be energy, um, information, announcements, right? This could be a time when people are releasing their book ideas or they're uh, making plans for, the, for next year and they're sharing their bucket list items. Um, Mercury is like what we focus on, the granular nitty gritty, and Jupiter is like the bigger picture. And so when they're in a flow state together, it feels good. It's like, okay, we're on the same page. The micro is meeting up with the macro and we can move forward. Now, there's a lot of mixed energy in the October forecast. So that same week, Mercury opposes Chiron, right? Chiron represents our, our wounds, our uh, karmic soul connections, um, and so it could be that you're having Mercury discussions or uh, text messages or things that uh, really dig up those most important pain points for us to overcome things. So um, my background is in health psychology. I have a master's in health psychology. I love wellness. My, my midheaven is in Virgo. I love talking about mind-body connection and wellness connection. And so this idea that Mercury is opposing Chiron, it could give you new ideas. It could bring different types of stressors for you to practice your nervous system muscles. Um, it could be a call for you to do a nervous system 
reset, whether that's through a biochemical um, supplements that uh, I have some that I recommend, or whether it's through meditation or breath work, something like this, we just have to use our tools, right? It's an opportunity to get stronger. So life doesn't get better, but we do when we practice these different reactions. And uh, when we're really trying to do God's will instead of our will, that's when things get to be in flow. And we turn over that sense of self and what I want for my life and turn and turn it into something that is a new person, right? That sheds the skin. So four planets in Scorpio sheds the skin, uh, helps us regenerate, helps us become better people, new people, uh, refreshed people, things like this, right? Chiron's retrograde. So Mercury is opposing Chiron, which is retrograde. Jupiter uh, retrogrades in Gemini on October 9th at 21 degrees of Gemini. It will go direct in February of next year in 11 Gemini. So that 11 to 21 Gemini space is where uh, Jupiter is hovering. And so Jupiter retrograde can influence like a mini Saturn in the skies. Same with all of the planets. Mars retrograde influences like a mini Venus. Venus retrograde influences like a mini Mars and so on, right? So when Jupiter uh, retrogrades, we have that extra Saturnian influence, which is uh, Saturn is the Lord of Karma. Saturn is um, discipline, duty, responsibilities. And so you might feel like there's some restrictions going on or that you've put yourself, like you've boxed yourself into a situation that you're not sure how to get out of or that um, you're having some different responsibilities and, and duties and having to grow up or mature in some capacity, especially when it comes to information exchange. Um, to, yeah, I could go on and on. Gemini rules the hands, the wrists, the shoulders, this whole area. And so if you're working with hobbies, it could be that you're relearning some hobbies. Like we're relearning the scales on the piano. We are using our hands. We're reworking. Like I have some Christmas ornaments that are um little pieces of pine wood that are sliced. And I just didn't do that great of a job with them the last couple of years. So I might be reworking them. Hobbies that we do with our hands, right? Um, on October 10th, there's a first quarter moon at 17 degrees of Capricorn. So whenever there's a first quarter moon, this is a yang moment, an opportunity to put your boots on the ground and do what you say you're going to do. Um, nine months prior, there was a new moon in Capricorn. So January 11th of 2024, something new was percolating for you in the areas of business, ambition, um, government. Um, Capricorn is yen and Capricorn is earth. And so there's something brewing for you in those themes, even though they feel very different. Now on October 10th, uh, there's readiness to take action, readiness to move forward with this plan of source that you've been dreaming about. Um, this follows a 27 uh, month cycle. So uh, the notes are on the blog post. I'll direct you back to that. On October 11th, right, Pluto goes direct in Capricorn. So Pluto's been retrograde in Capricorn. It goes direct uh, on October 11th, and it will re-enter Aquarius on January 21st. So this is kind of this final visit uh, to Capricorn. Pluto's in its final visit to Capricorn. And so I feel like there's a lot of um, ways and the, the structures that people are so ready to change now. I don't think they're going to. I think that there's this last effort for the old ways um, to shine through. And so it, if that's the case, let's look for the gifts. Let's look for the strategies. Let's look for wisdom and lessons from the past, from our elders. Capricorn ruled by Saturn represents the wise elder. Okay. And so who are you getting your information from? What source? Uh, who are the wise elders? What does the council of elders in your life look like, right? All right. Um, yep. Uh, as Mercury enters Scorpio, it will square Pluto, Jupiter will sextile Chiron retrograde. Uh, Mercury squaring Pluto, you know, Mercury in Scorpio squaring Pluto. I would say this is caution lights coming on for misrepresentation, um, like looking in the wrong direction. Um, this is why I'm so passionate about trusting your gut, trusting your instincts, trusting your uh, psychic abilities. You were born wise. You have the gift. You just need some training and um, you need the right intention, right? We're not being psychic to read everybody else's future. We're enhancing our psychic gifts so that we trust our intuition so that we have a stronger conscious contact with God over time, all the time, right? So if our goal is to be of maximum service to our fellows, right? And to our higher power, that requires staying in, in touch with that main line of communication. 
So as Mercury squares Pluto, you might feel detached from that main line of communication, or you might be questioning your power and your resources or where uh, you're getting your information from. So pause when agitated. Um, I love Mercury and Scorpio because we get that, uh, we get down into the nitty gritty core root causes of things. Um, it, it reminds me of the young quote, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. So um, yep, limitations are helpful during this time. And so like less is more. Uh, I, I mentioned October is that nine month of urgency and integration and culmination and things coming together. And so what things aren't coming together, allow them to fall apart, you know, allow space for not everything to make sense. You are going to be facing what you are meant to overcome, right? And so what, like, what is it? Um, God gives the hardest battles to the best warriors. I'm not really sure. You know what the thing is, but the idea here is you will face what you are meant to overcome. So October, I think you're going to be facing the music. I am too. I'm not exempt. None of the, my astrologer friends are exempt. We all have this, uh, this friendship and this text of like, well, here's how it's showing up for me, or here's how it's showing up for me. And we are growing and changing as people, you know, we're, we're, we're not different just because we can see the map or understand the language. So we're all in this together, right? Um, the sun trines Jupiter here mid-October, and I feel like that's big energy. That brings up some more confidence for us. The third week of October, my dog is dreaming. Can you hear that? Uh, the 14th through the 20th, sun squares Mars, right? That's where we're irrit irritable, restless, discontent, need to go somewhere, need to get something done, need to get something off of our plate. And so don't get caught in the distortion of that, right? Um, Mars and the sun also reflect our physical health and vitality. Uh, the square can be challenges, so just be super careful. I wouldn't push it too hard in the gym if you're like, you know, there can be accident prone type stuff. Um, but yeah, express stuff, sweat it out and do something physical in a safe way and um, process your extra energy. Venus trines Neptune, and then we've got this full moon at 24 Aries. So the, the 15th through the 17th is kind of a dreamier, more nebulous time. But then the full moon and Aries, 24 Aries on October 17th, right? Um, this full moon is part of, we're observing more information about something that started back in April of 2023. Uh, the Sabian symbol is a double promise, reveals its inner and outer meanings. I think that is so poetic for much of October, especially with the Mercury-Jupiter stuff, especially with the Mercury-Pluto square. A double promise reveals its inner and outer meaning. So are you listening with an ear of the spirit? Are you listening with an ear of the heart? Um, I think this is an important one. And Venus sextiles Pluto. So the truth will be revealed. Uh, powerful energy. You're going to be feeling it. Venus is gonna, then going to move into Sagittarius. Have you ever met a free spirit? Venus and Sag is like, you don't need all the details. We're here for a good time, not a long time. Get on the train. Let's go. Let's have fun. So if you're feeling like the magic carpet ride or going on a journey or uh, sharing in the joy of life or the road goes on forever and the party never ends, that's that uh, Venus and Sag influence and it will be there until November 11th. Let me underline November 11th because that's the date that Celeste and Sarah and I are doing our 2025 predictions workshop for only $33 investment. The link will be there for you. Please sign up, reserve your seat. We want to serve as many people as possible. Okay, October 21st through 27th, what do we got going on? Sun squaring Pluto, Mercury trining Saturn, Sun moves into Scorpio. This is all breakdown, breakthrough uh, that nine energy, something is coming to a head here. And so how are you going to respond? This is your spiritual fitness test, right? Uh, how are, how will you respond when um, you're facing these challenges in October, right? Um, there's, there's a lot of positive energy behind it. So every time there's a challenge, there's a positive release afterwards. So I don't want you to be overly nervous or concerned. Uh, Venus is going to try in the North Node right behind the Sun squaring Pluto. So breakdowns will lead to a breakthrough if you will let them, right? 
uh, the North Node, Venus trying the North Node sextile the South Node. This is where we have soul contracts. This is where we find a sense of fate and destiny. Um, this is where we feel like, oh, it's synchronicity of the universe. Things are meant to be. Um, and with a Venus, you know, a positive Venus placement, it also shows us who we were intended to love and how we were intended to love our love language, um, the people in, in our lives that were, uh, were meant to journey with, right, to do life with. October 24th is a really important day. Happy birthday to my special uh, person out there. And then I also have two, um, three wedding anniversaries to celebrate with friends. October 24th is a special day. We have a last quarter moon at one degree of Leo. This is uh, an important part of the constellation in terms of the forecast for the rest of the year. So Last quarter moon is when we tie something up, when we're, we are are in completion. So we're going to feel that. I've been talking about completion all month, but this is the astrological event that indicates it's over. The bill is due or you're paying something off, right? Um, this moon family cycle started back in July of 2022. The Sabian symbol is an epidemic of mumps. What? <laughs> all right. So uh, careful with whatever that means for you. <laughs> um, Mars sextiles Uranus on this last quarter moon. I definitely think there's going to be a plot twist, a change of direction, be like a leaf on a fast moving stream. Most of my clients are going through a career shift that they will see into fruition in 2025. I will say that. Not everybody, but I'm just curious. Are you wrapping up some kind of like side of your work? that you that worked really well for the last couple of years or last several years that you're just um tidying up tightening up doing it differently and then making a shift and it could be a big shift uh so this is an interesting time plot twist for sure where's the wind taking you where are the winds of change taking you all right the halloween forecast october 28th through 31st venus is squaring saturn so be careful of over committing yourself uh, sometimes our eyes are bigger than our bellies um, and we we put too much on our plate right uh, mercury is going to oppose uranus so uranus is that radical forward thinking uh einstein brilliant but also super edgy pushes the envelope right and and big change right the great awakener with mercury in an opposition there i feel like we're going to be met with radical viewpoints that will stir up the collective consciousness for the purpose of change or for the purpose of fine-tuning the way that you think right so um, this can create inflammation, um, mercury rules the nervous system, and so that could be an overstimulation, nervous breakdown type energy. Um, there is a need for mental health support during this time, and so if you need help, ask for it. Help is there. Uh, you're not alone, and fresh new energy is coming in soon, so don't make any stupid decisions. You know, like let a little time pass, take a nap, take a bath unplug yourself from the phone, um, stop watching things that are stressful to you, don't respond when you're upset, like all of these things, right? Uh, now, fresh new energy is coming November 1st because we will have a Scorpio new moon ye, on November 1st. On Halloween, Mercury trines Neptune. This is when you might, uh, your, your spidey senses are alert. Uh, you might be uh, aware of some natural gifts and talents that you have that have been latent inside of you that are coming back out. Um, psychic hits, intuition, things like this. Uh, I am, for example, getting back into my music side. And so I feel like, will I be practicing my scales? Will I get out a different instrument? Will I, whatever. You want to go with the flow, Mercury, try Neptune, you're in flow, you're in a spiritual flow. Uh, it's a more creative time. Maybe I'll do one of those silly Halloween crafts that I have penned on Pinterest. You know what I mean? Um, so have fun with it. If I had to say trick or treat, I mean, I would just say trick or treat because Mercury opposes Uranus, but also Mercury trines Neptune. So it is what you make it, right? It is what you make it. And um, thank you for being here. That's the end of October forecast. Don't forget your main resources are the digital astrology calendar, the 2025 astrology workbook, and the 2025 predictions workshop. Um, get your tools and resources so we can start studying together now during the season of introspection and going inside and uh, reflecting and planning, right? So this is such a great time of year to be preparing and understanding and studying what's coming. 
All right. I love you guys. I'm glad you're here. Thank you so much. Again, please like and subscribe to the channel. It helps me if you're here on YouTube. And if you're here on the podcast, awesome. Thank you. Also subscribe wherever you listen. You guys are the best. And if I can help you, I'm over at tiffanyharlick.com. Thanks and much love. Namaste.